Welcome. This week, uh, we're going to once again be looking at 100% premium cars. Uh, our stores are still, you know, completely wiped out, and there's very short supply of uh, Hot Wheels and Matchbox and those kind of things available. So uh, I have had to content myself with buying things off of eBay, which I, you know, I'm fine with doing, and I, you know, love doing that. So uh, <laughs> I have a ton of stuff to show you. And first up is this really cool truck from Auto World. Um, this is in the Patina series. And this apparently uses a kind of unique process to get this uh, kind of distressed paint finish on it. Um, so this is, you know, a, another Auto World square body pickup. One of, I don't know, what, 200 at this point? Uh, 1978 Chevy Silverado C10. So this is a little bit of an older older version of it. I think the last one that I uh, that I had picked up was, uh, I think they were up to 83. So they've been going through through the years with these. Um, so the Patina series this is a Miho exclusive. Um, nothing too special about the, the packaging. But it comes with a useless box. But so the truck itself is very cool and what's interesting about this process is that the I believe the the areas that are silver on this are actually the underlying casting showing through um, if if that's the process they used on this which I think it is um, although you can see kind of pixelation in the rust which is yeah, actually, that doesn't really look all that good to me. This is pretty pixelated, too. Um, yeah, so I had heard a lot of good things about this process. But in seeing it firsthand, I mean, it looks good to the naked eye. Obviously, on the camera, it's, it's a little bit magnified. And if you're looking at this on a big screen, it's going to be a lot magnified. Um but this is really kind of disappointing. It's very pixelated looking. Um, like especially here on this fender, you can really see a lot of dots in there. Huh. Interesting. It's an interesting finish. It's definitely it's definitely a cool looking truck. I mean, if you if you just set it back, right, look at it. Don't don't magnify it. It's it's actually a really cool looking truck. I mean, this thing is is awesome um, from a distance, and uh, it's just a little you know. But you get it up close and really dig into it. It's uh, it is a little bit disappointing. Um, this hood opens right. So nothing special about the engine. The bed's not not distressed at all. But yeah, I don't know. It's this is a bit of a mixed bag. Um, I mean, to you know, just just if I if I look past the camera and just look at the truck, it looks really cool. Um, and that's what you know this is really all about. But. Uh, you know, when you really take an up close look at the process, it is <laughs> it is a little bit disappointing. Um, so we'll call this one a you know fifty fifty. Actually, I'm going to give it. I I think I think it looks really cool. <laughs> Again, you know, looking past the camera, not magnifying it, that thing looks really awesome. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, all right, moving on. <laughs> So, uh, from Greenlight, we have the Blue Collar Collection. I had done a case unboxing on this earlier this week, and uh, so through this video, we're going to be opening these up and taking a closer look at them. And the first one is this uh, 1968 Volkswagen double cab pickup in Pennzoil livery, which is a very cool-looking model. And get this uh, rubber band off of here. So you have the, oh, interesting, the cover, which I just dropped on the floor. And 
and I have no idea where that went. There it is. Okay. All right. So white wall tires, chrome wheels. You do get inserted headlights, painted taillights, and this pretty cool little camper shell. And then if you take it off, you've got a, a rack or a, a frame, I guess, that would be to support the shell, I suppose. Um, this is the first of these castings that I've added to my collection, um, and uh, this is this is a pretty cool one. Um, so the game we're going to play here is we're gonna we're gonna play. Let's count the defects. Green light defects. So this one, if I can get this back in focus. Look at that windshield, um, and that is that is on the inside. And this is this is such a huge problem with green light. Um, these, you know, I, I I so frustrating for me because I absolutely love the brand, I love the vehicles. I, I actually think that green light is probably, you know, when they get it right, it's like the most realistic looking vehicle. There's something about the 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 texture of the paint and the just the the slight grittiness to the to the vehicles that that they have that you know for 164 scale. They, they they look to be more realistic than just about anything else, even though other brands have much more detail and, you know, win on numerous other levels. Um, anytime I think about, okay, what's the most realistic brand, I always think of Greenlight. But, man, their quality <laughs> is so hit or miss. I mean, this one's not bad. To be realistic, it's not bad, but that windshield is, is uh, definitely a bit iffy. Um, so hanging out in the back up here. So the other thing that I picked up this week was the, uh, you know, the new Toyota car culture set. I did a separate video on this. So if you're really interested in digging into these, um, I, I suggest watching, watching that video. So I'm just going to show them really quickly here for the camera. And, uh, this is a, I think this is a really cool set. Um, I think, uh, it's definitely in my top three for car culture sets for, for 2021. And uh, so I was very happy to get that. And uh, very nice Land Cruiser. So again, I did a separate video on those where I, where I go over those in much more detail. And then next up, does everybody remember these? So this is a collaboration between Kaido House and Mini GT uh, to do a Datsun 510 uh, Pro Street dragster or pro stock pro street dragster and uh, they put out you know two versions of this earlier this year this this purple one and uh and then this kind of a greenish one and uh, these are these are incredible models a lot of people complained about the scale uh, because these are definitely not 164 scale they are too large um to be you know to be 164 scale but now we have two more. Um, so number three and number four, one in red and one in orange. And it uh, doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot of a, of a difference between them. So these are sealed. Um, they are in the cellophane. So in theory, there is a chance that we can get a, a chase out of one of these. Um, Unless they have started, I just cut the box. That's unfortunate. They have started uh, marking these externally, so that the vendors can pluck the ones with chases in them and sell them for <clears throat> stupid amounts of money. The chases for these are selling for like a hundred and twenty dollars. I think I saw that. It's crazy. I would. I would not i don't i don't collect chases it's fun to pull them but i i don't collect them and i don't care about them um in fact most of the chases that i have i have a bunch of green machines and stuff that i i, I intend to give those away at some point um but uh yeah so this is uh this is just a solid red gloss red the black hood and it's the same vehicle as the as the last set, as far as I know, there's no changes. Um, 
even the wheels are the same. There's just different paint on the details. But it looks really good. These they just do a fantastic job on these. It is it is a little bit unfortunate that they uh that they did not stick to 164 scale, but uh you know, Juno Mai who uh who designed these doesn't care about that. So he, you know, he used to be a Hot Wheels designer and he designed the Datsun 510 model for Hot Wheels and that is too large as well, so he just continued continued that. And apparently they're going to bring out a 510 wagon next and that is also going to be too large. But coming from Mini GT, which Mini GT is owned by a company called True Scale Models, so their whole thing is supposed to be, you know, 164 scale models. Having them come out with things that are, are not 164 scale was a big disappointment to a lot of people. Um, to me, it's, it's take it or leave it because I'm not I'm not as particular about that as some people are. But so the red one's really cool. Um, the orange one I assume is going to be fairly similar. I don't. We, you know, when I saw these were coming out in different colors, at first I was like, I don't, I don't even know that I'm going to bother to get them. But I have a, such a hard time resisting these things because they are really beautiful. And, and Mini GT just does such a fantastic job on, on pretty much everything that they put out. So this one, again, it's a gloss orange. Pretty much the same. Yeah, you know, you have inserted details for the headlights with one of them that is a different color, and that was the same on on this this red one. Oh yeah, we have to look at the base on these because that is a work of art. I always, I always forget to turn cars over, but these these this base is is beautiful. It's obviously not accurate in any way, um, but it does look really cool. Um, so the wheels, yeah, so the wheels are the same tires you get a yellow roll cage on this one and kind of a beige or maybe that's gold I guess it's gold gold on this one so yeah these are just these are just really cool models unfortunately we're gonna get probably 50 of them in different colors at some point I'm gonna stop buying buying them the next ones that are coming are the the very common BRE racing liveries, um, which those will be hard to resist. Uh, I have to admit, I do I do like the BRE liveries. But next up from Greenlight, this is a hobby exclusive. This is a Matador 1972 AMC Matador, uh, United States Marshal police car. So. And on the back, it's nothing, nothing special. You know, I love historic police cars, or classic police cars. This is a super basic one. Um, it's just a metallic blue, or yeah, metallic blue with black, black wheels with you know little silver hubcaps in there. Nothing, nothing fancy, but. It is still a pretty cool release, and it is a green light that I do not see any problems in them. I, I have often said that I think that uh, the hobby exclusive green light releases have better quality control than the you know standard issue green lights, um, like these blue collar uh, releases that I have today. Um, so we'll see if that if that holds. I have a couple other uh, green light hobby exclusives to show you, um, and this is from the same same release, I guess. So again, 1972 AMC Matador in a in a police livery. This one has a little uh, kind of a gumdrop light on top, and it's the same. I think is it the same. Yeah, it's pretty much, it is the same color, just has the white middle section 
and white. And this is, let's see if I can zoom in on that. Colonial City Police. This one just has blacked out steelies for the wheels. No silver hubcaps. Same, same front end, front end detail. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Like this, this is just slightly gritty looking because they do a black wash on there. And for me, that 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 style, even though it's not clean and, and pristine, or kind of jewel like, like a lot of the more premium or super premium brands tend to be, it looks more realistic. Um, so this, these are cool. I love these. I love my classic police cars. Love to collect those. So uh, next up from Inno 64, um, Nissan Skyline GTR R32 in a Pandem, uh, Pandem uh, body kit. With the this information. Um, <clears throat> so Inno 64, I keep saying is a rapidly ascending brand in, in my view, um, of the, uh, I guess you could call these a super premium brand. They are probably my favorite. Um, I think Tarmac Works is the one that, that most people, uh, think about in this, in this category, but. I definitely have preferred Inno 64 in most cases, and I'll, I'll have I do have a couple Tarmac works today as well, um, as well as several other Inno 64s, including the very cool looking um, Ford Sierras that they just came out with, or at least the first two. Um, so let me get this off the base. So Innos do not roll, so these wheels don't move at all. And that is one thing I definitely do not like about the brand. But they are, you know, primarily intended to be a display model. So, you know, that's a take it or leave it kind of thing, I guess. But I personally do not like to keep cars in these acrylic cases. I, I you know, if at all possible, I, I like to remove them. Because, you know, holding them in your hand and, and being able to look at them like this is, is really what this is about to me. I, I call these things acrylic jails. I, I don't don't uh, don't care to keep the cars in them. Plus, they take up too much space. But, you know, to get these low stances that these cars have, um, they uh, they they give up the ability to roll on most of them. Some of them kind of sort of roll, but but not all of them. So anyway, so you, you know, typical Inno, you get, you know, inserted details for headlights and taillights, and you get a fantastic amount of detail on the interior, uh, which we can't see very well in here. Let's see, can we get anything in there to help us see in there? You can see a little bit. This is a right-hand drive. There is a roll cage in there, but not, not, we can't really see in there very well. This is a cool model. Very cool. Next up, from Tomica, uh, Tomica Premium, we have a couple models. Uh, the uh, this one, the Toyota Sprinter, Truno, and uh, this is. Need something to open the box. <clears throat> you know, Tomica Premium is always a fun brand. It sits in between the you know the Tomica Basic line and the Tomica Limited Vintage, which is a very detailed and very expensive line. Uh, and you know the big. The big difference between the basic line and, and this premium line is the wheels are are model specific and accurate, um, but these are still of a kind of a mixed scale. This one is one sixtieth scale, whereas when you get into Tomica Limited Vintage, uh, the scales they are true one sixty four scale. 
but this one's pretty cool looking. This is going to have opening doors. Um, most Tomica premiums have some kind of opening part on them. And they're always pretty, pretty well done. Door gaps aren't too bad. And they, uh, they have suspension and inserted taillights. Yes, inserted taillights. And the headlights are pop up. I don't know, just cool, cool basic model of this of this car. It's a kind of a neat car. So I love I love Tomica Premium. It's a nice it's a nice balance between uh, cost and detail, and uh, kind of a sweet spot for me. And then also from uh, Tomica Premium, we have a Slatey. And you might be wondering, what the heck is a Slatey? Um, a Slatey is a combination between a Nissan 180SX and a Nissan Silvia S13. So it has the body of a 180SX with the front end of a Silvia S13. So... <clears throat> This is this is your slatey. So if we look from Hot Wheels, we can get a 180SX. And we can see the front end. This actually has pop-up headlights, and it's a little bit more rounded. And then also from Hot Wheels, we have the Sylvia S13, although this is a mainline release, so there's no detail on it. But it has a, you know, a, a front end with non-pop-up headlights. So, so this is a combination of the two of them. These maybe, you know, I, I don't know how accurate these Hot Wheels are. But anyway, that's the, uh, the general idea of these. I had no idea what these were, so I had to look that up. <laughs> um, but again, you get a, a detailed wheel. They are plastic, uh, plastic wheels, one-piece wheels, but they... Or maybe they are two piece, but um, they're plastic. They're not rubber tires. Uh, to get rubber tires, you have to get Atomica Limited Vintage. And again, opening doors, which close very nicely. Door gaps are not terrible. They're they're noticeable, but but not too bad. Inserted tail tail light details again. So very cool. There's your Slatey. It's an interesting model. And I learned something because I did not know what a Slatey was before this. Next up from Mini GT, we have the Land Rover Defender 90 pickup in the Santa car livery, the 2021 Christmas edition. Uh, yeah, let's see about this one. Um, I'm not real big on Christmas releases. This is the first time I've ever bought one of these. Uh, but this is a new this is a new casting from Mini GT. So I bought it because of that, and because it's just a quirky release. Um, and I like I like that that it's quirky and fun. Um, so this is the you know they've obviously put out a ton of Land Rovers. You know the typical Defender 110s. There's, I think, 11 of them that they've put out so far. But this is a brand new casting. And then this comes with these really cool and kind of funky little figures. So you get a uh, reindeer with a, with a bell on it and some goggles. And then you get a Santa figurine with uh, goggles as well. Um, <laughs> just kind of kooky. Uh, and this 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 guy is kind of cute, but you know, otherwise Christmas releases are not not my thing. But again, it's new casting, so I wanted to check this out. Uh, you know, the front end is very similar to the Defender 110, as you might expect. It's like almost like this is the front half is just the 110, and then they just did a little short pickup bed on it, which is what it is. And uh, so you get a kind of a postage stamp livery with the Christmas theme. It's goofy, um, but it's cool to be able to check out this uh, 
this casting. I'm not going to say it's my favorite vehicle in the world. I think it's actually kind of weird looking. It, the bed is so short. It just it looks it just looks weird. Um, but it's cool. Brand new. It's first first one they've put out. It's Mini GT though, so you know there's going to be 20 more coming very very quickly. So we'll put him together with Santa. And uh, on to the next thing. But before we do that, um, if you're enjoying this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Next up, we have the Daytona, or the, sorry, Dodge Charger Daytona 392. This is another... Uh, Hobby exclusive release from this is a Miho exclusive. And nothing of interest on the back. And another useless box. I am not the biggest fan of the charger. At least not these new chargers. I love old chargers. Uh, these new ones. I'm, I'm other than police cars I think actually other than police cars this is the first version of this I have I may have one other one that I that I got as part of a case um, but they put out these they looked pretty cool to me figured I would just check it out see if it changes my opinion or elevates my opinion of the car overall and it probably does this looks pretty cool actually um, it has, you know, painted headlights, which are not terrible. Um, could be, could be better, but it's like the tires not <clears throat> seated quite right. That's uh, that's easily fixable. Yeah, it's a nice looking release. It does have. Looks like this is probably an insert. It's plastic insert for the tail lights. Yeah, this is cool. I like it. Like I said, not a huge fan of this car normally, but I one of my favorite things about collecting diecast cars is that you know new new releases or you know getting multiple versions of them and what have you. It has raised my opinion, changed my opinion of so many cars. This model, the tires are too wide. It's got that typical or that common green light wide tire thing going on. Um, so that one was good. Tire wasn't sitting quite right, but no major defects. That is not going to be the case with this one. So this is a 1979 Ford F-150. And we can already see in the package there, there is a broken wheel. So let's get this out and see how bad that actually is. Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's just the tire. Okay. That's good. That's easily fixable. That is nowhere near as bad as I was fearing. It's kind of misshapen. But... There we go. Look at that. Okay, that makes me very happy. Because <clears throat> I thought I was going to have to replace the wheels on this truck overall or something. And these wheels are really cool. That would be sad to have to do that because I don't have another set of this particular style of wheel. But no, no, no problem. Fixed right up there. So this is a really cool version of this truck i love this brown you know brown is just such a boring horrible color for for a vehicle it's just totally not exciting but on these 70s vehicles it just fits so well you got a little bit of a loose bumper um that may fall off but And then this has a removable camper shell. So you have the pickup <clears throat> with the camper. Great looking rear details. 
and fantastic front details. Uh, this casting does not have an opening hood. Yeah, so this looks great. These wheels, I love these wheels. They're very cool. Love this truck. Which is funny, you know, one of so many things. I mean, like, if three years ago, if you said I would be, you know, praising a Ford F-150 truck, I would have said you're nuts. But here we are. I have developed such an affinity for them. Next up, as promised, we have some Tarmac Works. Um, Audi R8 LMS 2019 in a BWT livery. Very cool pink. BWT is well known for their pink cars. Uh, they uh, sponsored a Formula One team for a while, or they still they still do, but the car is no longer pink uh, because it became the Aston Martin Formula One team. So they painted the cars green, and uh, a lot of people are unhappy about that because they don't show up very well on television anymore. They get lost. It's a very dark green, and this acrylic case does not want to open. Wow. Okay. All right. We're going to be looking at this through the case because I cannot get this off and I don't want to mess with it any longer. Um, so, uh, ADAC GT Masters Hockenheim Ring 2019. And. Very nice BWT log uh, livery. BWT is a water, like a bottled water brand, I believe. I don't think we have it in the U.S. I really want to get this case open. Ah, all right, I'll, I'll get it open later. <laughs> we'll just take a look at this. So, you know, Tarmac Works, as always, super detailed. You get all inserted details everywhere they're required. They, they go, like if you look on the wheels, you can see how there's two spokes that are painted pink on each of the wheels because they're replicating the real car, which would have been that way. Some nice detail in the engine bay. The interiors are always quite detailed as well. If you we could look inside there, which we're not going to be able to do with this case. Yeah, there's there's no way I can, can see inside there. Um, typically there's, you know, you'll see the racing harnesses and what have you, uh, detailed on the seats and everything looks, looks very good. Um, you have a little antenna on there. So very cool. It looks like this is a pretty good one. I've had some quality control issues with Tarmac Works as well, um, which has tempered my enthusiasm for the brand. Um, and, you know, made me generally prefer NO64. Um, but this looks pretty good. So happy with that one. Other than not being able to get the acrylic case open. And then from NO64, Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 9 wagon. I love wagons. So I had to, I had to pick up this thing. It looks pretty cool. And it came with some wheels that fell on the floor. Just dropping things, hitting my head. Uh, oh, good grief. Covered in dog fur. So, nice extra set of wheels. They would look good on here. Can we get this case open? Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, I think this actually might look better with these wheels on it. I like this style of wheel. But this is this is very cool looking. Yeah, we'll we'll take this off the base. It's always better when you get them off the base. This one's gonna roll. Look at that. It's actually gonna roll pretty well too has brake discs in there um, that actually look like they're fixed. Yeah, the you can see the calipers are fixed in place. That's really nice. And it rolls. It's nice. 
I mean, you might say this is a boring car. You know, it's a Lancer. But I think this is really cool. It's a wagon. I love wagons. I wish we could get wagons in the U.S. still. Sports wagons of some sort. There's nothing available anymore. It's very sad. But yeah, this is this is really cool looking. And it rolls. Look at that. I love that. That makes me very happy. And it comes with extra wheels. Awesome. Okay. Back to green light. So in the blue collar edition 1987 GMC Vandura 2500. And again, this looks looks great. Got a little little smudginess on the windows, but not too bad. The wheels look great. Livery looks great. Yeah, this looks really good. This looks really good. I don't have any uh, any versions of this in my collection at all, so I'm very happy to have this one, and it looks like a pretty good specimen of it. So, awesome. Awesome. Set that there. And then, in 064, these things are really cool. Uh, if you like this car. The Ford Sierra RS500 Cosworth. So we got two versions of this. And uh, this week they actually put out four more versions of this. <laughs> so six versions in the matter of a month or so. And again, we get extra wheels. And I'm going to take this one off the base straight away. for my case juggling that I've got to keep everything together otherwise I'll never be able to put the right pieces back together because there's still a couple more of these to come and it seems this one's going to be it's going to roll not great yeah it doesn't really roll this is this is just awesome I don't know why I love this car I know a lot of people love this car. I love this car. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, this one and the Escort Cosworth as well, which kind of has a similar look to it. Just just cool vehicles. And this is a great version. Of course, you know, it's Inno, so it's inserted taillights, inserted headlights, fully accurate and detailed wheels, and... The interior should be fairly detailed. Let's try again to shine a light in there, see if we can see anything. Yeah. You can see the details in the dash, but um, it's got a low battery warning, so yeah, not good. <laughs> this video is going longer than I normally would. All right, so enough futzing around with the light. So. Very cool. Very, very cool version. Love this. Next up, the uh, same same vehicle in a touring car livery. This one does does gain a antenna, and it looks like maybe some different body work. Um, so we will have to get... I, I may not take this one off the base. Because that antenna on there looks... So, where did the white one go? So we get, yeah, it looks like pretty much the same. Headlight, or the windshield wiper is different. That's interesting. So you get two windshield wipers here. There's only one on this one because it's a race car. No need to worry about clearing the windows for your passengers when there's only ever going to be one person in the car and looks like otherwise 
they're pretty similar. And we gain the antenna on the roof. But yeah, these are gorgeous. I've been debating whether I'm going to buy the others. Um, you know, like I said, they, they came out with four more <laughs> this week. Uh, so there's three more racing livery versions and <clears throat> a uh, another street car version in blue. So I'm not sure about that yet, but knowing me, I'll probably grab all of them. Oh, so back to green light, blue collar. 1981 Chevrolet C20 Custom Deluxe Pickup. <clears throat> so green light, square body truck. It's kind of a little bit of a boring version to me. Green light, square body definitely is not as nice as Auto Worlds for some reason. Um, removable bed cover on this one. Not exactly sure what it is about it. But uh, Auto World is definitely the king of this style of truck. And as this one. And obviously these are very different years. And probably completely different trucks as far as I know. I don't know. I shouldn't talk too much about these trucks because I really don't know very much about them. <clears> then <throat> again, Blue Collar Collection... 1970 Jeep Jeepster Commando pickup. And this one I did not cut. All right. Um, why did I not cut this? All right. Well, we're going to skip that one because this video is going too long and my battery is going to die. So um, then from Tarmac Works, we have the Toyota Hilux. Uh, pickup truck. Ah, yay, a tarmac and the, the shell came off. So this we are definitely going to take off the base. And another vehicle that <clears throat> once upon a time I never would have been very excited about. And, uh, like NO64, most tarmac works do not roll, but this one will. It has enough enough clearance because it sits so high that it can roll. This is really cool. Get this in focus. We have a very nice skid plate under there. Inserted head headlight detail. Got the roll cage in there. These mud guards look really cool. The tubular frame for the truck, lots of uh, detail in the bed, fire extinguisher. Is this a jack? Yeah, a jack. Maybe an air compressor. Snorkel. Yeah, this is this is very cool. I debated this because, you know, it's one of these modern trucks like this, um, you know, a Toyota truck to me is not the, not the most interesting vehicle around, but this is, this is definitely worth picking up. This is cool. I really like this one. This may actually be the, my favorite tarmac works that I have. Very cool. Okay. Last one from Greenlight again, 1992 Ford Bronco XLT in metallic blue. This is, this is a great looking version of this truck. comes off sits on there pretty loose 
and yeah, I, I love this Bronco from Greenlight. It's fantastic. This one has a cover over the spare tire. I don't like the way that this thing just kind of sits on here and it's loose. I typically glue it on, and I'll probably do that with this one as well because I don't ever want to take it off. I don't need to see that seat. I would prefer it stayed in place. But this is, this is a great-looking release. And I'm happy to say that of the green lights that, that uh, we opened in this video, um, there were actually not any major quality issues. Um, we had that tire on the truck, which I thought was going to be a major issue. And we had some minor issues, like there's some flashing here on the tires on this one. <clears throat> um, you know, and window, window issues and what have you. But compared to some of the things that I've seen on green lights, uh, these were not major issues at all, so I'm very happy about that. And this is an awesome release. So, all right, there you are. That's my weekly haul, and if you've enjoyed this video, how about watching this one next?